Now, this bill would boost government spending by $320 billion over an already huge amount of money. What do you think of it? Well, I'm so happy today. <laughs> You know, <laughs> l let me just say this in all serious. I, I think we need to have like a two million person wash, uh, a march on Capitol Hill to let these people know what we think. Uh, basically, the, just the, the future is being destroyed. And I don't know whether it's 20 years, 10 years, five years. I don't know what number it's going to be. But eventually, the bond market's going to crash to account for all this debt, which means the stock market's going to crash, which means the economy's going to crash. Then each party's going to blame each other. And guess who's going to do all the bailing out? We will. It is a cesspool, and it's brought to us by the socialists and what I call the Republicans that continue to BS us on the size of government, what they're going to do going forward. Ooh. Wow, I don't even know how to follow up with that, Gary, just in terms of what you said. But uh, $320 billion in spending, and it's only going to be offset by $75 billion, which would only come into effect over the next decade or so. So that's worrisome. But I want to just pivot just to a comment that we got from the Koch Brothers Conservative Freedoms Group that came out with this warning that you're seeing on your screen. Re Republicans who go along with this budget deal will lose all credibility on spending. This budget deal is ludicrous. The GOP has been misleading the American public on spending for years now. Yeah, they talk a great game on the campaign trail, but when it's crunch time, they fold. Mm. Well, here's the real yeah. question. Where does Gary K stand on all this? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was a little subtle. Wasn't it's, it? ba it's baffling to me. The man always but waffles. You, but do you disagree, this. Gary B? You don't disagree with no, me? No, I, I agree 100. percent I'm just going to give you. I'm going to put some. You, you said, you know, when are we going to start? You know, feeling the effects of this. Uh, well, let's see. We will have debt held by the public 100 mm percent -hmm. of GDP within 10 years. We'll have interest on the debt equal to defense spending in five years. We'll be paying as much as in on interest as we do for F-14s, uh, carriers. As Gary Kay said, look, you, you can uh, uh, magnify his feelings on this. We are just passing this along to Christina's grandchildren. I, I have that in my notes, and I didn't want to, you know, I'm the only one maybe with no children I here, am and I'm just sorry. Like, like, uh, forget it. I'm not yet. even married. Uh, I well, no we're, I, and, and, uh, and we have a big announcement that we, no. Oh, my I'm, God. I'm just, I'm just, uh, All right. no, uh, Jonathan, I know you're dying to get in, but we've got a congressman waiting to get in, and we want Republican Congressman Mac Thornberry to weigh in. He just voted in favor of the bill and he joins us now sir i don't know if you just heard freedom works and a lot of other fiscal conservatives are mad as hell they say you are violating a commitment to limited government by voting in favor of this bill what's your response uh, i think the concerns about the debt are absolutely legitimate and absolutely true so why did what you vote for the bill if what has been misunderstood is what this bill does. It actually increases spending $49 billion from this year to next year. Uh, and 22 of that goes to defense. If you step back and look and compare defense spending in 2010 and defense spending this year, it is up 0.27%. If you count inflation, it's actually down 17 percent. So one of the big misunderstandings is that somehow this increases spending by $300 billion. No, it's $300 billion over sequester, which would never have occurred. The other big misunderstanding is this is the budget. No, this is less than 30 percent of the budget. 70% of the budget, where all the increase has taken place, is mandatory spending. And anybody who complains about us not dealing with mandatory spending is exactly right. That's what's going up, and that's what's driving the debt. Congressman, but spending simply has not been cut. And respectfully, sir, you've been in Congress for quite a long time. I mean, has the GOP it essentially abandoned their mantle as being fiscally conservative? They were You were a great opposition party, sir, under Obama, the sequester, et cetera, opposing that spending. But now that you're in power, I mean, everyone from Rush Limbaugh to the president himself who opposed uh, raising the debt ceiling in, 20, uh, in 2013, to you it sounds like, sir, are happy with seeing spending and the debt and the deficit just go up. Up and up and up. Why am I of, wrong, sir? Of course, I'm, I'm not happy. Uh, the debt ceiling is a reflection of the spending that has already occurred. Uh, and y'all should know 
that if the federal yeah. government gets in a position to default on the debt it has already incurred, 70 plus percent of which is mandatory spending, we really do have an economic crisis. I would say, number one, Republicans in the House, of course, are not in power. We are in the minority. Number two, the only entitlements, mandatory spending that have been reformed in the last 20 years have been because of Republican initiatives. We, we reformed food stamps. The House last uh, year before last reformed health care, including Medicaid, which failed in the Senate by one vote. So it is absolutely true that uh, the big driver of the debt has not been reformed. That is mandatory spending programs like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, etc. That's what we've got to tackle if yeah. we're going to back away from the debt and spending. Congressman, uh, let me ask you a question, though. I, I agree with all you said about, uh, you know, reducing the entitlements. Let's get into your camp, though, defense spending. You, uh, defense budget is, is one of the biggest components outside entitlement, if not the uh, biggest. But aren't we spending, aren't we really fighting old wars, World War II wars? Isn't most of the budget going to uh, aircraft carriers, F-14s, things like that, when we should be putting most of the budget not into hardware, which sounds good in every congressional district, and I'm sure yours loves it, but into more cybersecurity, things like that? I guess my point is, do we really need that big of a budget to fight the current kind of wars? Uh the answer is yes. We don't buy F-14s anymore, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know what I, uh, you know what I meant. Zing. I, yeah, just, just to clarify. Okay. Uh, here, here's the challenge. Absolutely, we have got to focus on peer competitors like Russia and China, and you're right, that includes cyber, artificial intelligence, hypersonics, directed energy weapons, all of those things. At the same time, terrorists have not gone away. Uh, we cannot neglect the fact that ISIS is still plotting and planning every day against us. And that doesn't even include what Iran and North Korea are doing. We have to plan for all of those things. Unlike other countries, we uh, actually pay our people. And so about a third of the defense budget goes for people for salaries and benefits to recruit and retain the top quality men and women and their families uh, who serve the country uh, currently. And then a lot of what we've been doing lately is fixing our stuff because the defense budget was cut mm. by 20 percent starting in 2010 uh, when you count inflation. And we had too many planes that couldn't fly, too many okay. ships that couldn't sail. Repair is what we're focused yeah, on and now. And you're, you're focusing on defense, which is great. You mentioned $22 billion. And if we're looking at the numbers right now, we're seeing 65 Republicans that did vote ye yes for this budget passing, and yet 132 that voted no. And you weren't among those 132. Can you just tell me a little bit more about the dynamics that are going on within your party in terms of this uh, voting for this? Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned a while ago, Republicans are a minority in the House, and, uh, at their, and, and, and so there is a temptation to vote no. And look, there is good and there is bad in this bill. For me, I think defense is the first job of the federal government, and I am not willing to say to some pilot or his family, I'm not going to fix your plane because Nancy Pelosi wanted to spend too much on education or labor or, or some that, other domestic program. Is that your program. only priority, and, and Congressman? The, sorry to interrupt, the, but it seems like you're only focusing on defense. That's it. No, defense is the first job of the federal government, and it is literally life and death for the men and women who volunteer to serve. And, and one other factoid, defense is 15, 1-5% of the federal budget. It was about 50% in John Kennedy's day. So Con I think, I think okay. if we're going to send people out on missions, we ought to give them the best this country can have, and that's our first Congressman, job. we got to leave it at that. Uh, we thank you very much. Please come back and talk to us again. Appreciate it.